Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network and producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, and Phil Svitek, this is I Talk Movies. Long-form interviews with leading members of the film industry. And now, your host of I Talk Movies. Hello everyone, I'm Kathy Kelly and we are doing another I Talk Movies right here on the Popcorn Talk Network. And today's guest, Jenna Sims, you are the lead in Three-Headed Shark Attack, but you've been in several other sci-fi movies as well, including The 50-Foot Cheerleader, which I think is so cool. Thank you, yeah, that was my first big film role that I mm-hmm. booked. It was Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader, which is a Roger Corman film. He does. He's notorious for all these crazy sci-fi like blended you know like piranha conda all these crazy movies and he did attack of the 50 foot cheerleader and he put me in it (laughs) so you like sci-fi movies oh i love it i'm a huge nerd i think it's amazing and i recently watched uh sharknado 3 i think we met at that premiere you went to the premiere and your shark dress (laughs) can we talk about that for a second though where did you come up with the idea for that okay so whenever i booked and i'm actually wearing sharks i know i don't think i can see it um Whenever I booked Continuing the, Shark Week. Yeah. Whenever I booked the shark movie, Three Headed Shark Attack, I was just sitting in my trailer one day, bored, waiting to shoot, you know, lots of downtime, and I was just Googling, you know, shark outfits and yeah. shark things. I thought there was going to be a lot to promote, which there has been, thankfully. So I started buying a lot of shark things, including these little short, what do you call these, high-waisted shorts. Um, but I saw the shark dress online, and they didn't have my size, and so Ooh. I had a good friend of mine, Randall Smith, he's a pageant dress designer. Yeah. He designed that dress for me. That is so <laughs> awesome. Yeah. But you've done other things other than sci-fi movies. You were in oh, totally. Last Vegas. Uh, you have a, a whole credit. I do. I've um, done television stuff. as well. Yeah. I'm in Kill the Messenger with Jeremy Renner. It's just these sci-fi movies have such a huge place in my heart, because that's how my career got started. Yeah. And they're really fun to work on. And my roles are bigger in those films. (laughs) (laughs) So I want to talk all about Three-Headed Shark Attack um, and what you're up to now. But we want to bring it back to the very beginning of how you got your start in acting. Um, I know you grew up in the South in Georgia. I did. (laughs) So have you always just had the bug your entire life? Well, pageants are what started it. Um, I did my first pageant when I was maybe 15 to get money for college. And then that led to me competing at Miss Teen USA. I was Miss Georgia Teen USA. And so that was my first sort of, well, it was my first television experience, mm-hmm. like NBC Live, telecast. And after that moment, I was just like hitting the ground running. I was pursuing modeling, pursuing acting. I went to school in Nashville shortly after that and did a bunch of country music videos. Mm-hmm. And so that was my first taste, I guess, after Miss Teen USA of entertainment. And then I decided that I was too big for Nashville and I moved to <laughs> LA. <laughs> and now, aren't you in between LA and Atlanta as well? I'm a local hire for Atlanta. I did buy a house there. Um, you did? I did. I have, well, it's a condo. That's a pretty yeah. big feat it's for a 26 year old. Thank you, I'm a homeowner. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I can't afford it out here in LA. So I rent out here in LA, actually, okay. right down the street from the studio. Uh, and yeah, I go home a lot. I love going home to Atlanta, especially I love when I get to go and work. I just, I've just i shot, Las Vegas was shot there. Yeah. I did a show called Satisfaction there. There are so many things mm-hmm. being shot Dead in Park Atlanta Guys. right now. Oh, there's tons. And I Walking hope, I hope more and more and more because I love going home to work. <laughs> yeah. Is your family still all out there? They are. They're in the town that I grew up in. <laughs> awesome. So how did pageantry, because I know a lot of girls that are in pageants, they want to get into the entertainment industry, but how did you kind of get your foot in the door after that, other than the the country music videos? Yeah, (laughs) my year as Miss Georgia Teen USA, um, I was was, was a senior in high school, and that opened up so many doors for me. I got to do a lot of local modeling for prom gown designers. I was in all the little prom magazines, like Seventeen Prom, Teen Vogue, Um, and I did a lot of bridal stuff. You know, one thing leads to another when you're doing the pro- the pageant dresses and the prom dresses, and then you do the bridal dresses. Once you're um, old enough, or you're yeah, still like I know, I was like 17, modeling. like modeling a bridal gown. <laughs> oh, it was weird. Um, and then you know, I just networking through my appearances as Miss Georgia Teen USA. Mm-hmm. I met a lot of. You know, you know all these local people. I did a lot of like, I did a local pizza commercial. I did a lot of local like maybe a car commercial and a cooking show. And I just was really good at networking. And yeah. one thing led to another. And then I got an agent in Atlanta, a modeling agent and an acting agent in Atlanta, which they have now in the Southeast because there's yeah. such a big market there. And I guess that's the way to do it now is to just get an agent. But back in the day, I booked my first TV role off Facebook. 
Vampire Diaries. What? How? This was before like the film market was so big. There was this lady, Marty Cherix, who's now the actual casting director for Vampire Diaries and the originals. Um, all the local hires in Atlanta and Louisiana. Um, she found me, and uh, I guess I'd posted a bikini picture or something, and they were casting for a guest star. Okay. And so she brought me in off. Uh, we were Facebook messaging back and forth. Yeah. I was my own agent for the whole thing, and then um, yeah, I booked it um, after the audition. That's crazy. And you didn't think she was just some random stalker catfishing no. you at all or <laughs> no i mean if you look like you know I, imdb you know yeah. there's always it legitimizes you're smart everything. about it oh totally i okay. would never like book it off craigslist or but something crazy <laughs> even the fact that it wasn't just an extra role and there were mm -hmm. lines associated with yeah, it that's a pretty yeah. big deal yeah that's one of my biggest like residual experiences residual check experiences too i mean that show airs all over the world mm -hmm. <laughs> another sci-fi series yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and then you also started um a charity as well mm -hmm. so how did you get into philanthropy like why did you want to um start this i've been doing philanthropy way longer than i've been pursuing entertainment um i started my charity the pageant of hope 10 years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> started in high school um but prior to that i had some cancer that ran in my family and um, I lost a couple of my grandparents really early on, so I was really motivated to find a cure for cancer at 10 years old because yeah. I didn't know what this disease was. And I wanted to raise all the money that I could. And then when I turned 14, I really was inspired to work with children. So, and I started doing pageants. And I created this event called the Pageant of Hope to sort of bring these kids to me because it's really hard to get into these hospitals mm -hmm. um, and interact with these kids who are terminally ill. So. I created the event where the kids can come to me and it's very low impact. It's not like a sport or, you know, a long day of anything. It's quite easy for them to participate in the pageant because we do their hair, nails, makeup. Aww. We do a little mini interview, a little walk training, and then carry out an entire pageant. And the catch is that we crown every single winner. Like we crown every participant a winner. Like okay. we, unique uh, titles such as best hair, best smile, you know, whatever the title is, you know, we crown, everybody gets a crown and a sash and a little goodie bag. <laughs> I just realized this while we were talking. Uh, one of our old co-hosts at After Buzz, Cannon Bliss. I love her. Um, she was with yeah, Alabama. Yeah. My she, year. Uh, she flew back to participate yes, in that a couple years Mobile. ago. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's all coming together. We were like talking before the show about oh, how fine. we know like multiple people. But yeah, that's it's crazy that there's that connection as well. I still keep in touch with all of those girls from Miss Teen USA. Yeah. Like, within the past month, I've seen three of the girls I competed with, which is unbelievable. That's really cool because I feel like there are some Sometimes negative stereotypes against yes. pageant girls who are, you know, they're catty they're or catty whatever, but the fact that you still have friends throughout <laughs> yeah. that process is really yeah, cool. Yeah, those are untrue. I've never been to a pageant where girls were fighting backstage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. Um, so when you did take the plunge and you decided to move out to Los Angeles to pursue acting, what was your family's reaction? <laughs> they were both very different. Um, my mom and dad are divorced, so I was able to approach them separately. Um, my mom probably saw it coming from a mile away because she is really supportive of me. She's my number one fan. I don't even know how I told her. I was just like, I think I'm going to move to LA. And she's like, go. Here's money, go. Yeah. <laughs> so she's still like my big cheerleader. Like she comes to any like big red carpet event. She'll fly out here and come to fun events with me. Um, but my dad, I sort of had to like sit behind the desk and like be very businesslike about it. Yeah. And it was actually 2008, eight nine when the economy was pretty terrible. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of jobs. So I had to convince him that it was in my benefit to leave college because even when I graduate, there wouldn't be a job available for me and I'm going to pursue my dream. And I had this whole thing planned out and he yeah. was like, okay, you do what you do. As long as it makes you happy, I'll support you. And he's still, he's, I haven't turned back. <laughs> <laughs> Is he really protective of you? No, he's just, he's easy going. He's low key. He's just like, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of parents, I have to ask you, what are your thoughts on parents on social media? Oh, I love it. My whole family's on social media. I heard your mom is on Twitter. She's Jenna's mom 23. <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> yeah, and people, all my friends even call her Jenna's mom. Like she, she awesome. has lost her real name identity and she probably loves it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is the weirdest thing? Like, has she ever tweeted something? You're like, Mom, oh, all the you time. I'm like, you've got to take that down. Yeah. You've got to. I forget what it was exactly. <laughs> like, from time to time, I'll get you know 
fans, which I don't know. I'm still like really humble. I'm like, oh my gosh, like people know who I am. That's crazy to me. Yeah. But I'll get people approach me. Oh, I saw you in 50 Foot Cheerleader. Oh, I follow you on Snap. Snapchat's the big thing now because I have a decent following on there. I get people all the time in LA, especially these young, like little kids, like, oh, I love your Snapchat. Like, oh my gosh, <sighs> can I take a picture? Can we snap? And this yeah. and that and the other. So I think my mom like witnessed one of those moments and sort of took a picture and then posted it on her page and was like, you know, Jenna and her fans. And I'm like, no, no, you can't, you can't She's be doing that. You can't be doing you. that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then in addition to all the, the movies and the Snapchats that we mentioned, <laughs> you've worked with some incredible talent too. Like you've worked, worked with, with Morgan like Freeman. Seven like, or eight Oscar yeah. winners. Yeah. So tell us, was there any moment in um, all of these shoots that you've had like either a, a fan moment yourself or oh, you were just yes. so intimidated by someone's talent? I think it's the first time you really lay eyes on these people, like Morgan Freeman especially. He has such a presence and an energy in his voice even. I mean, it could you just silence a room. Yeah. And so especially when I saw him and whenever we were working on a scene that we had together, like his line was like actually telling me to my face that I am beautiful. But when Morgan Freeman says that to you, it just like gets in your soul. And I was just like, ah! like tearing up like I can't be tearing up this is a comedy <laughs> um, so whenever I had that experience with Morgan Freeman and then I saw Robert De Niro this was the same film Las Vegas yeah. Robert De Niro I really look up to him and Kevin Klein was so sweet they're seeing like we joked around with each other every day like I was just trying not to be like a fangirl like starstruck um, and then the first time I laid eyes on Jeremy Renner he was in costume um, as his character in Kill the Messenger which yeah. it was a real life story so he was made to look like somebody else and I didn't really recognize him at first because I'm used to seeing him as like Hawkeye or like just a normal looking guy but I think yeah. he had a wig on a fake mustache and like completely different clothing so it took me a minute and then he's like introduced himself and I'm like oh my god it's Jeremy Renner so that was a big moment too <laughs> going into auditions for Las Vegas and Kill the Messenger are you intimidated at all like more so because you know that bigger name talents are attached definitely especially for Las Vegas although I did have a good feeling about that because they casted maybe 10 there were like 10 smaller like bit people pieces and mm -hmm. we we're all gonna work for like three weeks at a time because there's this one huge party scene it took forever to yeah. shoot so I felt pretty good I'm like at the time there wasn't a lot of um, talent in Atlanta like now a lot of girls in LA are actually moving to Atlanta because of the market there really I feel like I was on the like cutting edge like one of the first the people to realize yeah. that Atlanta had a market but now there's a little bit more competition but whenever I was auditioning for Las Vegas I met with the director and I pretty I had a good feeling in the room that I was gonna get something. Yeah. Um, and I did, <laughs> and it was very exciting. Um, but for Kill the Messenger, yeah, I was petrified because the audition was nothing like the actual part. Like it was a lot easier when I actually filmed on the day, but I had to like scream. And anytime you're screaming in like a room this size, it's just awkward because there's not a lot of space for the scream to go. And yeah. we're in a hotel, like, conference room thing and you're just like oh my gosh people are listening it's just so it's awkward because <laughs> they don't have actual casting buildings there right. they have a couple now they definitely okay. do but for this one casting director she it's like operates out of a hotel for some reason <laughs> it works <laughs> yeah and i was in a bikini too so screaming <laughs> in a bikini in a hotel in a really small room <laughs> yeah um do you think that um the casting directors are like nicer out in Atlanta yes. since it is like yes. Southern hospitality. I know them all now because okay. there's maybe six or seven, and they're they all like the lady who's been casting Vampire Diaries has been over and over. like I've, I see her a lot because now it's been maybe six or seven years since I've auditioned for, since I've been on that show. They're like bringing me back now because it's been so long. And yeah. I can play a different character, so I've seen her and I've seen there's one guy Mark Finn Cannon who casts everything. So I've re I've been reading for him for like five years. Yeah. He booked me on Las Vegas. I mean, he's booked me three or four times. So you just kind of get friendly with them. And they're always like, they're they're pulling for you. And ultimately, you have to understand that it's up to the producers. So yeah. they really do just want to, you know, get their job done and book the right girl and make everybody happy. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, for a show like Vampire Diaries, the fans are so hardcore. Wouldn't they know that, like, they would take uh, screen think. grabs of you from, like, back in the day and then if you did get cast again? Yeah, although I was a brunette on that show. Okay. And, I mean, I'm sure they would see it on IMDb. Yeah. But I've actually had friends that have come back before on that yeah. show, and I think they were, you know, it was fine. Okay. I think it depends on the size of the role, too. Like, Definitely. I couldn't come back as, like, a, like a big arc, you know, but I could be, like... 
hey, can I help you in a restaurant? You know, yeah. <laughs> something quick. <laughs> and it could be like the flashback scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we could too. definitely flashback. <laughs> <laughs> work. Um, no one would know. <laughs> uh, so what do you personally think your biggest role to date has been? Oh, I'm going to say attack of the 50-foot cheerleader because that... <laughs> literally biggest role. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, it just boosted my confidence. and Because when I moved to L.A., I, I truly did believe in myself. I'm like, I know I can work as an actress. But it didn't hit me until I actually booked that movie. And I'm like, wow, I just booked a leading role in a film. Yeah. And it's just led to so many other things. How long was it from when you actually made the move to booking that movie? Book, two years. I moved in like okay. 09. I booked it in 2011. That's pretty typical, too. Yeah, I and I did. I mean, I was working, though. I was doing smaller roles like in TV. I did One mm-hmm. Tree Hill. And I did a lot of things between when I first moved out and 50 Foot Cheerleader. But the biggest thing was that. That catapulted my career for sure. Yeah. Um, are you one of the believers of acting classes or have you stayed away from them? No, I, I do. Because they help me. I mean, I bring in auditions. I'm not a huge believer of like the like start and then you graduate and you're done. I like bring on my auditions and I work on my auditions. Okay. And that, that's more of my speed. Like I want to work on something that's relevant, that's going to help me. And, you know, I feel confident going into these auditions because that's ultimately how you work. Yeah. Facing, I mean, we're going back a little bit, but facing so much rejection in Hollywood, like that can really, um, I feel like, have a negative effect on your confidence. Mm-hmm. But how do you deal with that uh, and just power yeah. through it? I rarely, rarely will look up like on IMDb who gets the part okay. unless I'll see it on TV. And I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, I totally get it. Like, I just recently auditioned for that vacation movie, the part, oh, um, yeah. the Corvette girl that's like waving, like the iconic, um, I think Chrissy Brinkley got it the first time. So I'm like, this is my moment. This is going to be my <laughs> big Hollywood break. Um, but I was really, I, the audition was perfect. Like, I showed yeah. up looking really cute and fierce, but they gave it to Hannah Davis, who was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So I'm like, oh, I get it. I can't yeah. compete with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a name. So things like that, it's hard because I'm like, well, it could have been me, but I get it. Yeah. Um, but if they book someone who's like, you know, an Asian girl or a brunette, like they weren't, looking, totally they weren't looking for why. a blonde. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of those things that I've learned too. Like you have to know that there might just be one little mm-hmm. specific thing that's a difference. And at the mm-hmm. end of the day, it's just a business. Yeah. So. And I don't really look at it as rejection because if I can go in the room and make a fan out of the casting director and yes. establish a relationship with the casting director, I've won. I just try to book the room is what they say. Like, if you don't book the job, at least book the room. I love that mentality, mm-hmm. though. That's awesome. Um, so let's talk about attack, or not attack of the, the attack three head, of the three headed shark. Three headed shark say, attack. You have so many attack movies yes. in your repertoire. I do. Um, so uh, tell me about that, and um, I guess take me through the process of how you got cast and yeah. where you guys shot and everything. I got casted actually out of my Atlanta agency because it shot in Florida. Okay. So they sent me the audition for a smaller role, and I. I read and they they just didn't want me for that one role so apparently they took this professor role and made it a little bit bigger and gave it to me so I booked it off tape which rarely happens like usually you have to at least meet the director and read yeah. in person but I booked it right off my tape which is great um, but I had to fly to Pensacola like in within the next like two days so it was a pretty quick That's turnaround crazy, I didn't, yeah. didn't have a lot of time to like prepare a lot of people were like oh did you go into the science lab and like really get into character I'm like no I literally packed a suitcase and flew to Florida <laughs> um, and I love working in the south even if it wasn't in Georgia or close to home like it's so fun like working outside of LA for some yeah. reason because you get to like live like with other actors and it's kind of like a little summer camp but I shot for like two and a half weeks it was in the middle of winter and it was cold it really was, yeah it was really freezing and like late January and we had to get in the water like it was like I want I don't want to say miserable but because I was having the time of my life but it was pretty terrible yeah (laughs) but every day I would be so like we would go out the cast we would go out and have dinner together and the camaraderie was so much fun like we Mm -hmm. laughed and cut up and I didn't even think about the cold because we were having truly a blast. (laughs) Were you a fan of some of the other shark movies that sci-fi had put out prior to signing on to this film? I was definitely a fan of Sharknado and I secretly wanted our film to just go crazy viral like that. (laughs) Even though I did die, like there's not really a possibility that I would come back in another film, but unless it was like a zombie shark attack (laughs) movie. Um, Yeah, I really, I I just respect the fact that the Sharknado franchise is what it is Mm -hmm. because our movie is as crazy as that film. Yeah. And it's like hit or miss. You never really know when these shark movies or any of these crazy sci-fi movies are just going to blow up. Mm-hmm. And it could be a career, you know, make. Did you know that uh, 
around the same time as the first Sharknado, there was a movie produced called Blast Vegas. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, it was a B movie as well. Blast Vegas, that's great. Yeah. I know. You never know. They always turn these titles around. That's pretty funny. I like that. <laughs> so do you have a dream role or um, oh, people yeah. that you want to work with moving forward? Um, I think a dream role would be to like play the daughter of Will Ferrell or like Tina Fey. Or maybe, like, yeah, they'd be my mom and dad. And it'd okay. be some sort of little rom-com, or I'd be, like, the disastrous daughter of those two. Um, but, yeah, and those are the two actors that I really wanted to work with. Okay. And do you have a preference of comedy or drama? Oh, comedy, hands down. Really? It's so much easier to me. I, I hear so many people say that it's the opposite, like that comedy is harder because you have the, uh, the timing. To get the it's timing like a science. Right. Of, there's a science about it. But yeah. to me, it just the cadence of it comes natural. Mm -hmm. Whereas drama, I have such a hard time sort of, I guess, feeling my feelings. <laughs> I'm just such a little like giggly, giggly, uppity person. Like yeah. when I have to be really serious in a drama or like heavy emotional stuff, it's challenging for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I prefer comedy. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, do you have, I guess, a dream role? So you played hmm. like the hot scientist a lot. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I feel like you have. Because um, I am a nerd. And they see, these casting <laughs> directors see it. They're like, oh, she's pretty, but she can be a nerd. Was that like your favorite uh, subject in school growing up, science? or? I was a math girl. Okay. But math and science pretty similar. Me yeah. too. I, I did math. like science. Um, my dream role. <sighs> A lot of these, any of the ones I auditioned for last week, those are all my dream roles. Okay. I want to book them all. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great answer. Yeah, and the one I'm auditioning for today is a, it's a, it's a dream role. Actually, it is. The one I'm auditioning for today is a dream role. Across all my fingers it's a new, and toes. It's a new Fox <laughs> pilot, and it's a, based in the South, and they're Ooh. looking for a Southern blonde. So clearly, it's written for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I want to hear, since this is, we're wrapping up the interview, but I feel like you've toned down the Southern accent a little uh -huh. bit. I want to hear the full on Southern. Oh, I'll try to do the rest of the interview. Oh gosh. See, when I'm in like business mode, it just doesn't come I know. out. Like, give me some wine. Did and then you have to take out. like diction classes? Or? I did. Okay. I took like three of them with this really great guy. Um, gosh, I can't remember his name, but he's like the go-to. If you want to learn an accent, drop an accent. He like works on sets and stuff. And he just gave me, he just worked with me like, we were pretty, I just remember being so close, like right across from the desk and like staring into his eyes and he's like, do it this way and like pronounce it this way and like for like three hours and I, I, I don't turn it back, I gotta <laughs> figure it out now. But yeah, I think if it's written, like the one today, it's written where you can read it in a Southern, like, you know, I'm trying to think of the, the words draw. A draw, yeah, yeah, you like drop the G, like something and you know, there's always a y'all or darling or bless your heart. Yeah. Like those kind of things are just sprinkled in to make it come out naturally. Definitely. <laughs> so bring out the draw for where can people see Attack of the Three-Headed Shark in the future? <laughs> Three-Headed Shark Attack. And I can't do this. Like, I'm like, Three-Headed <laughs> Shark Attack. <laughs> it comes out. Um, it's been airing on Sci-Fi. I would yeah. check your local listings. Definitely on Sci-Fi because it's aired like three or four times last week. Um, but it comes out on DVD August 4th. Awesome. <laughs> August 4th, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and then if people want to find you on social media, where can they find you? Um, both Twitter and Instagram is J-E-N-A, Jenna M, as in Mary Sims, Jenna M Sims. There's one N in Jenna. And then my Snapchat is Rainbow Savage. <laughs> <laughs> that is such an awesome Snapchat. Thanks. Um, and everybody, like, because I have maybe like 15,000 followers on there. Whoa. I get messages every day. What's your real name? You do all this cool stuff. What's your real name? So yeah. I'm always like, my name is Jenna Sims. And they're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> You're a real human being, yeah. not just a rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks. You can follow all of us here um, at Popcorn Talk. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me at Katherine Kelly on Twitter and at Kathy Kelly on Instagram. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Popcorn Talk Network, for more iTalk movies. Yay. <laughs> From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.